Welcome to TE Destinations. I'm here with the fabulous Guya. Hi. <laughs> and we're going to be covering the Quirinal Hill with all the wonderful Baroque gems of the city. And we're going to top it off with the most theatrical fountain in the city of Rome, the Trevi Fountain. Andiamo. Let's go. Of course, we can't start our day without a great breakfast of Sicilian delights. This hidden bar is packed with all sweet and savory specialties of sequela, and it harkens back to the 50s, still with its original decor. Our journey today will take us from the ancient to the great theatricality of the Baroque. Did you know that this beautiful piazza takes its shape due to the largest public baths in ancient Rome? Poor Moses here points to our first stop. Boom! The most sumptuous Baroque interior in Rome. An explosion of movement and color. A celebration because this icon helped an army defeat their enemies. Everywhere you look, it's as if you're watching a spectacle on stage and the figures are bursting out of the frame. Notice the Cardinal watching the show with you? We are at the peak of the highest hill, and here the gods lounge around as they provide us water. Now, for a secret pathway to a garden. Are you a fan of the movie Roman Holiday? This is where Audrey Hepburn escaped from an embassy to have a glorious adventure in the Eternal City. We are coming to explore a palace where many people consider it is where the Baroque age started. It's great to have Guya with me because she helps me to look at things in a completely different way. So, Kuya, why don't you tell us a little bit about the famous Palazzo Quirinale? Yes, here we are. This is the main entrance of the Palazzo, built uh, between the end of 15 and the beginning of 1600 for being the Pope's royal palace. Now, this is the residence of the President of the Republic of Italy, so it's, it can be considered the Italian White House. You can see the flags on the balcony, the Italian flag and the flag of the European Union. Usually there is a third flag, which is the presidential flag. Uh, the fact that it's not here now means that today the president is not in Rome. As Guia mentioned, this is where the popes resided for over 300 years. They did still have the best view of St. Peter's Dome. Now, for a quirky little known fact. This church at the base of the hill was important for one main thing. It contains internal organs of the popes who died in the palace. These are the names of whose popes' remains are still here. But look at what else it has in store for us. The best possible view of the Trevi Fountain, a place built to celebrate water being brought into the city. You see, even we tour guides partake in the traditions, and we even take part in drinking from the Fountain of the Lovers, as well as throwing coins in the fountain. And now a moment for a little break in Rinascente, the department store, to cool off a bit. Drink of choice, an espresso shakerado. So Guya, this seems to be a perfect spot to talk about the competition between Bernini and photo meeting. Yes, one of the most important art competition in Rome, the one that features 1600. And this is the perfect spot because the bell tower, the white bell tower that you see right behind my shoulder, was realized by Borromini, while his opponent Bernini was living right in front of the church. So every day when he opened the windows of his bedroom, he had the pleasure to see his opponent masterpiece right in front of him. 
uh, it was a very long competition but this is one just one of the spots where it took place a little bit further there is also a very famous chapel by Borromini dedicated to the wise man when the guy built this chapel he got a special permission by the Pope to destroy the previous one made by Bernini so this was the way in which they were acting always trying to fighting and outcome each other and that's why San Carlino and also Sant'Andrea Quirinale, which we just saw, yes. were done by both of these architects. Yes, absolutely. This is another perfect set for you know explaining their competition. It was not the right to fight, it was an art competition. So I will do this and I will do this. Different moves in different periods of their lives. Yeah. And it's up to you to choose who got the final move and who was the winner of this competition. That's right. And we even saw them on Palazzo Barberini when yes, they started. We, yes, the, this was re really the starting point of their careers together with St. Peter. And we saw the two different ways of meaning architecture because you realize that the style way are completely different. One is very geometrical, very squared, and the other one is an ellipse. So it's a direct path to heaven. After such lovely discourse, we decide to have some lunch. It's always important to know the best places to go to enjoy wonderful food, wine, and a locale with the perfect ambience that is quiet enough to have a wonderful conversation. We say goodbye to Guya and go back up the hill to get to one of the greatest archaeological museums in the world. From the General of Tivoli, ancient Roman calendars, even Augustus and Alexander the Great. There are pieces here that you never knew existed, but are most certainly some of the most important masterpieces of ancient Rome. Speaking of masterpieces, let's check out a cloister designed by Michelangelo. It houses other parts of the museum collection. And did you know these buildings were all built near or within what is left of the largest public baths of ancient Rome? The Terme of Diocletian, a place built in 306 AD for sports, reading, swimming, and relaxation. But truly here, you can get an idea of how vast these massive complexes were. That is the view if you were swimming in the pool. Pretty incredible, right? And now, how about a rooftop cocktail? Thanks for watching our video. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Click on the bell to be notified whenever we have new content uploaded. Ciao.